<clears throat> Hello there. Hello, everybody. Welcome on into uh, the return of a, a, a point and click adventure games on stream. Um, how are we doing today? I don't know who's in, but hello. Um, <laughs> Morbius Rising. I swear to God, if it's just going to be Morbius jokes. <laughs> no, it's Mobius. It's Mobius, not Morbius. <laughs> Thought you were early, but I realized I to lost track of time. Uh, technically, it is part of my earlier schedule, and I see a cat tail there. My, uh, where I'm now starting at uh, 7 o'clock rather than half 7. Come on, Rosie. Oh, cat, cat. Come on, cat. Oh. Put some morb over here. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, e isn't that a, a, a planet that Sonic lives on? It's Mobius is like a, this whole science thing. I don't exactly know what it means, but it's like there's something called a Mobius strip. I think he was a guy. There might have been a guy called Mobius. Um, and then like a lot of like scientific stuff out is like named after him. I don't exactly know. I'm not the person to ask about science things. Um. But this is a game um, from Jane Jensen, uh, who was the creator of Gabriel Knight. Gabriel Knight series is one of my favorite series of point and clicks. Uh, I've been feeling in, in the Jane Jensen mood lately, uh, and I wanted to essentially play one of the one of her games uh, that I haven't actually played through, uh, which I do own, and that's Mobius Empire Rising, uh, which is the most recent original game uh, that Jane Jensen worked on, and also the last. Uh, and it came out in 2014, to kind of middling reviews. Um, but the, it has its fans, so I have no idea what to expect from it. Hi. Um, you see, no, yeah, I, I found a copy of No One Lives Forever 2 in a, in a charity shop for 50p, and I was just like, hell yeah, give me that. I was like, Cat probably wants to leave. Uh, hold on, let me pull my uh, lounge pack legs down. <laughs> I had them hiked up slightly because my legs were warm. Um, well, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to, to playing a bit of point and click. I want to do more point and clicks on my channel. Like, I know I do a lot on Twitch already, but like, I feel like I need to lead with the point and clicks because it's my whole thing. It's my whole jam. I say wearing a Doom shirt. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is a, <laughs> oh yeah, it's Morbin time. Oh, we're going to say <laughs> thank you for the prime sub, Chloe. Uh, very much, uh, appreciated. Doom is technically a point and click uh, from a certain point of view. Yeah, that's true. Um, what else would I want to say about this? I don't, I don't know. Uh, Mobius Empire Rising. It's about a guy called Malachi Rector. He's an antique seller and the, a, a secret government agency is like, hey, uh, we need your help with something, and we're gonna hire you for a thing because you've got a big brain. Um, so yeah, Malachi Rector is like this super smart guy. Um, and it's, that, this sort of super high IQ is part of the um, is part of the plot and the way the gameplay unfolds. From what I've played, I've played the demo of it. And essentially, you kind of do like a bit of like it's almost like a bit like a sort of Sherlock Holmes thing, but like. Uh, it, kind of like a BBC Sherlock thing. He's a bit Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> so he kind of he kind of like looks at details on people and tries to get a conclusion from the details that he sees. And you have to try and pick out those details and come to a conclusion. It's an interesting mechanic. Uh, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing how well it actually applies throughout the game. Um, so yeah. And this will be a stream with the face cam. I didn't do a face cam in my last uh, stream. I'm just trying some with, some without and seeing what I prefer. I don't know. Um, are we going to see him enter the mob palace? I, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Leave me. I must enter my Morbin palace. Also, uh, yeah. I think there's a comic to read beforehand as well. All right. That was, so, yeah. No intro cutscene there. So, yeah. Mobius Empire Rising. Uh, yeah, there's this whole comic. Uh, in uh, comic sans and everything, it's great. Uh, so this is a uh, this is a little bit of backstory on Malachi Rector. Uh, do your best. This was easy. I'm bored. Ten more minutes, children. Ouch! You should make needles that don't hurt. Maybe you'll grow up and invent one, eh? Malachi Rector. T 
test results IQ 175, frontal lobe analysis, left cortex 80%, right cortex 20%. Enjoying your books, Kai? You're such a good boy. I'm going for a walk. I'll be back in a little while. Okay, mommy. Logic, 99.9 percentile. Memory, 99.5 percentile. Two hours later. Hmm, your husband is a fool. I have to go before I'm missed. Next week, we're all... Oh, uh, wrong order. Your husband is a fool. We're all fools. Ow! Ah. <laughs> she gets attacked by a lion. <laughs> <laughs> this is his backstory. Malachi Rector's tragic backstory is his mum was attacked by a lion. Or committing infidelity. That's what I'm picking up here. Um, Kai, stay back. South Africa. That's the setting that he, he grew up in. So, uh, Isabel. Isabel. DNA type? LR, SD, 23311. Ah, blam, blam. Isabel, no. Flat code red. Many years later in San Juan, Spain. 2013. Uh, arrived at Pires Via uh, Rector, we await your transmission. Senor Rector, your reputation precedes you. I hear you have an exquisite eye. You're going to love this piece. It's magnificent. A treasure. I may I see the chest now. Of course, it's upstairs this way. Here she is, guaranteed genuine. I have the documents for it, of course. Worth more than the two million euro asking price. It was crafted in 1470 and was used for a period of one month by Torquemada himself. The chest itself is 17th century, made in Rome. The hinges are rusted, but the latch isn't. The hinges were taken from a 15th century dresser. The varnish is 16th century uh, Venetian with a floor varnish. Uh, ah, and the forge is currently just a bit of contemporary wood glue. The chest is estimated as a cobbled mishmash. Estimated value, $5,000. Looks like the guy from went down the front. Maybe a little bit, I don't know. Also, hey, back. Thank you, Mr. Rector. Your fee will be deposited immediately. How dare you insult my honor. You are lying. That was all made up. No one could possibly know such things with just one luck. No one. Who do you think you are? I think I'm someone who appraises valuables for a living. And that includes jewelry. Green glass, Portugal. Cubic zirconium, American. 10 karat gold plating over aluminium. Estimated value, $150. No, 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 creator, he's a liar. And then she says something in Spanish. I, I can't speak Spanish, so I won't bother it. <laughs> uh, but she's very upset uh, about this this whole thing. Send GPS coordinates in the nearest hospital now. He gets uh, trapped in by uh, these goons, though. Damn it, when I told you to hire security, when will you listen to me? Malachi? Yeah, Malachi gets into a fight, I guess. So yeah, that's that's Malachi Rector, a man with a big brain, uh, with a tragic backstory, uh, and he can appraise antiques just by little details that he sees on them. So uh, let's get, begin the game. It's not all told in the comic style. Oh, and it has this intro song, which is kind of incredible. I've heard this intro song before. Um, the whole soundtrack was done by Robert Holmes, who did the music for Gabriel Knight, and is also the husband of the writer Jane Jensen, um, and was sung by Robert Holmes' daughter, Raleigh Holmes. I actually really like Raleigh Holmes' music as well. She's great. But I, I really love... Jane Jensen's storytelling. If you haven't played the Gabriel Knight games, you're really missing out. They, they are top-notch adventure games. Like, maybe not like the gameplay and puzzle-wise. I think they're pretty much standard for that. But like, the actual like uh, story is just so enrapturing in those games that I just I, I don't. Know. I really want to replay them at some point. Don't know what your weather is like, but it's hotter than hell over here. Oh, it's warm. I am very warm. My lounge pants are hiked up, so they're basically shorts right now. Let me get around to gay. Yes! Such a good series. Katie Hallahan. I, I'm pretty sure I've spoken with her before. She's cool. I had a, I had a bit of contact with some of the Pinkerton Road and uh, Phoenix Online Studios people uh, around the time of the, 
the Gabriel Knight 20th remaster in 2014. Some good people. It's a shame that their games didn't, you know, do as well as they'd hoped, because uh, they're really nice people. Also, the um, Julian Kwasniewski work worked on this. Julian Kwasniewski is the... Um, he is one of the sound directors of uh, that Telltale used a lot, so a lot of uh, Sam and Max was directed by Julian Kwasniewski as well. So a lot of the same voice actors will appear. Uh, you might recognize them from like Sam and Max and other Telltale games in this game, so yeah. Oh, it's very humid, yeah. I've got this drink here and I'm probably going to end up refilling it at some point during the stream. Are we going to see more of that Duke Nukem point and click? When I've got time to work on it, yeah. Um, I, I just, I, I've, I've been kind of working out the puzzle design of it, and the idea for that Duke Nukem point and click was essentially just recreating the first level of Duke Nukem 3D, um, but as a point and click. So that's rethinking a lot of the sort of obstacles, but having it be familiar but different. So people who played Duke Nukem 3D and know the first level by heart, they'll be able to go, okay, I know I have to get into here, but what's the way I would usually get in? And then they'd find puzzles along the way. So it'd be like familiar but different is kind of the idea of it. Um, and it'd be very short. It'd probably be about maybe 30 minute experience at most. So yeah, chapter one into your hands. But I, I, that's what I'd like to do. Um, figure out the flow graph of it all first. That's what I'm working on. Uh, puzzle design charts, like, say, like basically saying, here's the goal. Here are the obstacles, and here it all layers up. Um, using uh, Ron Gilbert's design philosophy as like a uh, as a guide. Who knows? Uh, I, it's something I really love to to do. So, but yeah, uh, let's go. I'm gonna get into some actual gameplay now, maybe. <laughs> Pronounce Venice like a pasta. Venice. <laughs> so this game can be a little bit jank at times. Um, it's on the Unity engine and it's a, it's a little bit rougher on the edges. But I... Uh, Malachi, you're back. Just landed. Are you alright? What did the doctor say? Lots of bruising, but there's no permanent damage. Don't fuss. Malachi, you were in the hospital in Spain for a week. A man who evaluates antiques for a living should not have to worry about getting engine. beaten by thugs. No, I don't mean it's rough around the engines because it's Unity. Was a fake. It's a Unity it's engine game that is rough around the edges, is what I mean. You need to take security <laughs> on these jobs. Some of these sellers are dangerous people, and you excel at pushing people's buttons. I'm honest, and that's precisely why my clients hire me. Is there any urgent business? I have a few things to I fill you in on. Vampire. Let me know when you've had a chance yeah. to settle in. Okay. Hold on. Let me boost the music. I turned the music down because I was worried it would be too loud. But I think it should be fine. Um, I don't think this is a uh, Venice weather. I think this is... Um, I think this is New York. I think that's where uh, this is based. Let's have a look. My suitcase. I can't forget I have my passport in the pocket. Let's get the passport then. Well, yeah, you see, sometimes when you like passport cl click him. on things to move, his movement's a little bit like sort of jerky and weird, but you know. A gilded Jerome figurine. Quite rare. All of our items are one of a kind and in excellent condition. I do have a reputation to maintain. Do you now? We're right on 7th Avenue. Excellent visibility and good foot traffic. But most of the walk-ins take one look at the price tags and quietly leave. I've done Fortunately, that most of our business <laughs> comes from private clients. Let's talk to Gretchen. Gretchen Stern, my shop manager. She's efficient and intelligent, very good at what she does. Unfortunately, she can act overly familiar at times. I don't need mothering or girlfriending or any ing for that matter. Malachi has a very ooh, we should legs. catch up on what's been going on while I was away. Let's do it. Upcoming contract. So what's the next assignment? You just got here. You probably haven't even been to your penthouse yet. That wasn't the question. <sighs> Fine. There's a supposedly undiscovered Rembrandt in Rome for Sotheby's, and mm. two pieces in Egypt for Rutherford's. 
Take them both. Malachi, you just got out of the hospital. You should let your body rest. At least long enough to get used to a time zone. Oh my With goodness. With the economy Thanks. in the gutter, there are a lot of desperate people mm. right now. The desperate thing can be a little bit awkward at times as well. I'll create a good forgery. I might as well make the money while I can. You're driving yourself too hard. Your body needs... What my body needs is no It's a little bit Grim Fandango and look, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. There was also a new client who called. Something about a government contract. Oh. Let's talk about security first. You said in your email that you've been looking into security options? I made a list of the reputable security agencies in New York. You should have a bodyguard travel with you. With the money you earn on these assignments, you can afford it. No, they'd only get in the way and be tiresome. I prefer to travel alone. Fine. There are other options. What other options? What other options do you have for security? I've been researching security agencies in various international cities. I can set someone up when you travel, have them meet you at the airport. I can't trust someone I've just <clears throat> met. How could I be sure they weren't already bought off? These are reputable agencies. You have to get over <clears throat> your trust issues. Hmm. Yeah, lip sync. It, it, it is just kind of like the, uh... No other brilliant ideas about security? I have a report on where to buy guns in various countries. It's not a very good option, but it's better than going into a bad situation unarmed. And maybe the mere presence of a gun will remind you not to shoot off your mouth. Gretchen. <laughs> I mean, give your fascinating opinion quite so freely. All right. Maybe we'll try that next time. All right. Who's Who the new client? New client? Amble Dexter, 452 Amble Central Park Dexter. West. Ooh. He wouldn't say what it was about, Ooh. just that he needed someone with your expertise. If he wouldn't even say what it's about, then it's not worth my time following up. Well, it is a very upscale address, but do as you please. All That's right. That's all for now. Very well. Well, we have that new location now. Um, I'm also going to call people. Nothing. And that's extremely mm. odd. It's an unusual name, but there's information on everyone on the internet. Unless it was intentionally scrubbed. Interesting. Okay, that's the hint system. Okay, I don't need that right now. Uh, so you got, like, various things. Oh, God. oh this is the uh, where you can look at everything. And then this is uh, presumably the map. Okay, so this is how you get around. Oh, this map is very Gabriel Knight 1. Oh, Gabriel Knight 2 as well, actually. Um, let's just have a look at everything. That cornucopia is made of solid gold. Worth having a look around, isn't it? This is mob sense. You haven't even seen the, the start of um, <laughs> what, what this character can do yet. Is there anything in the alcove that urgently needs my appraisal? Not at the moment, no. Sometimes, our customers bring in items for my appraisal. They're kept tucked away behind the screen, so no one tries to buy them. Okay. Clock? A chinois clock. They usually don't last long in the store. Okay. Let's go to his office, then. I do like the sort of painted backgrounds. Oh. I see you're in Manhattan. Please come by at your how earliest How did you know I was in Manhattan? Hmm. And how did he get my cell phone number? How indeed. Present passport to security. Amber Dexter. I <laughs> until he said this more of a time. Guys, please, it's, it's Morbius. It's not Morbius. <laughs> Dogon masks from Molly. Fine china from the early 19th century. Quite a, quite a collection. Letter from Barozzi? Barozzi? Giuseppe Barozzi? It's a letter from Mr. Barozzi. Barozzi. An antique dealer in Venice. He has a brilliant eye for interesting pieces. He's a little quaint. He insists on sending snail mail. Oh, this is one that, something that they love to do in a Gabriel Knight games a lot, is give you, like, actual letters to read. Um, instead of just going, you, you get the letter and then it gives you the information. You actually get to, like, read the letter and it's, like, properly uh, sort of formatted and everything. I always really loved, um, like, the way that, you know, just the, Jane Jensen's worlds just feel so... Nicely put together, you know? I'd like to see what Barozzi's found. Hmm. Newspaper. The bleak economy seems to be all the newspapers can talk about these days. European economic collapse. Uh-huh. 
Oh, he's popping pills. Okay. I guess he needs to do that sometimes. I don't use my computer like I used to. Everything is on my phone these days. Let's use I'd computer. rather use my phone. Oh, okay. The chair is more modern than the rest of the furniture. Much more comfortable that way. Fair enough. Bird statue? It's an original sculpture by an upcoming artist. It should be a good return on investment someday. Sure. I should be able to get to see um, his little sort of... Uh, is it this thing, actually? That's oh, just the menu. But essentially, he has like this sort of thing that he does. I'm going to go see Mr. Dexter. Good. But tell him you can't travel anywhere for a few weeks. I'll do nothing of the sort. Good luck. Okay. All right. 452 Central Park West. That man is not your average security guard. He looks serious. And um, inventory's here. Oh, okay. Here we go. Ah, oh, okay. That's how inventory works. Great. My passport. Let's uh, use the. It's given my passport. Here's my passport. Welcome, Mr. Rector. You can go through to Mr. Dexter's office. Use the elevator, sir. Okay. Thank That's you. A reflection on the floor, actually. That's really cool. Ah, Mr. Rector. What a pleasure to finally meet you. I've heard about your remarkable talents. Which I presume you'd like to rent in the near future. Precisely. Please, come in and sit down. This is Mr. Reichardt, my associate. Mr. Rector? Hello. Before we discuss the job that we have in mind, mm, well, I hope you a little bit like... to a simple exercise. <laughs> oh? I'm afraid I left my performing monkey hat at home. Please don't take it like that. I think as a historian, you'll find it quite fascinating. I'll think about it. All right. Let's have a look at Amble Dexter. Dexter. He appears to run this place, whatever this place is. Um. What is this exercise you mentioned? Take a look at this man. Tell me if he reminds you of any specific person in history. I read objects, not people. You can tell it's on a budget, but I find it really endearing. Has a lot of heart. Me, That's pretty please. much what a lot of the, the late Jane Jensen games were. It didn't have the backing of Sierra anymore. So. I'm intrigued. The budget why it wasn't there, but there was there was that there's a lot of ambition and a lot of like really, really cool stuff put into these games. Did I get a thing? Okay. Oh, it's here. Ah, here we go. Brain I fan. to work on my phone. I'll scan in the man's bio. Here we go. Giuseppe Monte Montessero. Giuseppe Montessero, a young Italian painter and architect, a promising talent. He died a few years ago when his career was only just beginning. See if the life of Giuseppe Montessero resembles that of any historical figure. Uh, Giuseppe was a talented Italian artist from a young age. Giuseppe became quite a visionary in the field of architecture. His research and work formed the basis for much of today's environmentally friendly or green building design. Giuseppe was hired by the Vatican to implement his green designs on a new building. Giuseppe was known to have many female lovers and was engaged for five years to a woman he didn't love. They were never married and the engagement ended when she died. Giuseppe helped his ma manage his father's business in his early teens and surprisingly excelled at it. Though respected by, by his peers, Giuseppe did not rise to any great fame or renown in his lifetime, partly due to his early death at the age of 36. Giuseppe had many friends and clients in the church who supported his work. Okay. Let's analyze him then. Okay. So this is a, basically kind of um, well, what a lot of like this game is. is It's kind of like picking out details in like a Sherlock Holmes fashion and trying to kind of align them up. This is just the sort of uh, the tutorial bit of it. Um, so you have these different artists um, that essentially, um, you know, 
talented artist from a young age. Solid reputation as an artist in his early 20s, so that fits. You've got uh, Botticelli. Uh, many of his work were passed off as his masters when he was training. So that could possibly fit as well. Likely that many of his master's paintings were his. Leonardo da Vinci, of course. Um, Michelangelo, as an apprentice, he was paid as a master artist. Um, was apprenticed at age... So none of that could really be eliminated right now. But essentially, we're, we're just trying to narrow it down. This is Morbius 2022. Yeah, pretty much. Um, became quite a visionary in the field of architecture. His research and work formed the basis of much of today's environment-friendly or green design. Uh, okay. So, yeah, it's, it's just uh, kind of figuring these things out. <clears throat> Frank Lloyd Wright. This work in architecture probably influenced the end of the Renaissance. So I think because there are ones that are and aren't there, we can probably start to rule them out a little bit, right? So... If we have a think about it... See, all of these apply. Who's this one? Oh, it's Botticelli again. There are seven candidates. Many friends in the, and clients in the church who supported his work. Is there a... I, it seems kind of like the one that seems to uh, appear in every one is Raphael. So, let's have a look. <clears throat> the apprentice, Giuseppe was a talented artist from a young age, was apprenticed at the age of eight because of the promise he showed. Yeah. Giuseppe became a field visionary in the architecture. His work in the architecture heavily influenced the end of the Renaissance and start of the Baroque period. Sure. Hired by the Vatican to implement green designs. For a time, uh, was the main architect of St. Peter's uh, Basilica. So much of his work was discarded in favor of Michelangelo's work after his death. Uh, many female lovers was once engaged, but his fiancée died. Okay, they both had uh, fiancées who died. Managed his father's business, managed his father's workshop. Uh... Death of 36, death of 37. <clears throat> yeah, invited to Rome, friends and clients in the church. Let's go with it, Raphael. Giuseppe Montesero's life is near identical match to that of Raphael. So yeah, that's kind of a, a part of a, what, we, what he does, but it's not the only thing that, that uh, Malachi can do. So yeah. Is this a joke? Not at all. What do you see? His biography reads like that of Raffaello Sanzio d'Arbino, the 15th century painter better known as Raphael. You do not disappoint, Mr. Rector. Such a pleasure to finally meet you. Truly, I'm delighted. Oh, wonderful. Rose for a moment there, now, buddy. perhaps we can discuss the job you have for me. Our game is Morbius fan of Fredegard Evans. Okay. Hold on. Before... Hold on. Let me, I want to see if I can do... I think I can do the brain thing on uh, on him as well, but I don't want to leave. No, don't go. Okay. Oh, no. Actually, that's good. You can do it with him as well. So you can analyze people. So, as you can see, he's got a sharp gaze. He's a highly intelligent, angry, or a stimulant. Steady hands, calm leader, extremely passive or bored. Uh, runs an agency from a wheelchair. He's highly determined, a sympathy seeker, or is very ill. So let's have a think about this. What, what's the most likely in each one? Um, sharp gaze. I would, I would, I would say he's likely to be highly intelligent. Uh, steady hands. He's probably a calm leader. And as for runs agency from a re wheelchair, it's 
probably likely that he's just a highly determined individual. So let's see if this uh, this checks out. I don't know if that was right or not. <laughs> Hopefully it was. Uh, let's talk, chat to him again. Also, this is the same team that did the, um, the Gabriel Knight remaster in 2014 as well. I still don't see the point of that exercise. A modern man happens to have a similar life story to a famous painter. What of it? Indeed. Its relevancy to us needn't concern you. All we ask for is your expertise in making the historical connection. Okay. Do you have a job for me, Mr. Dexter, or not? I do. The job is in Venice. A young woman of wealth and high birth was murdered there a week ago. Her name was Bianca Cardolo. I'd like you to go to Venice and investigate who she was and do what you just did so magnificently. See if she reminds you of any historical person. That is all. Okay. I don't investigate deaths. Hmm. Hire a detective. We're not looking for her killer. Only the facts of her life. A brief biography, if you will. And for you to document any connections you draw to any figure in history. Perhaps there will be none. That's acceptable as well. You get paid twenty to 30000 for your work for the auction houses. I'll pay you fifty. It should take you no more than a week. Sure. What say you, Mr. Rector? Uh, I might be interested. I might be interested. But first I want to know why you're keen on this particular woman, and what the point is behind these comparisons to people in history. I'm afraid any further information is classified at a high security level. I'll take the job. I'll take the job. Excellent. I know you won't disappoint me, Mr. Rector. Speak to the guard in the lobby. He'll give you your plane tickets. And Godspeed. I very much look forward to hearing your report when you return from Venice. Okay, I'll Mr. forward Dexter. the relevant information about Bianca Cardolo to your phone. Very well. Goodbye. All right. Pass through the scanner, sir. Um, can I leave? Ah, exit to map. Oh! Someone's keeping an eye on Malachi. Head back to uh, Rector Antiques, I guess. Hey, Gretchen, I got a job! I'm gonna be going to Venice! Gretchen? Yes, Malachi? Did you give Amble Dexter my cell phone number? No. <clears throat> I told him I'd give you his message and that I didn't know when you'd be back in town. Hmm. Well, he got it from somewhere. Hmm. That's all for now. Very well. Okay, so what am I doing now? Look at the map. There's nowhere else I can go here. Okay, hold on. We've accepted the job. Um, that's just, I keep forgetting that's the main menu. Um, phone, it's up here. Professor Reed, Amble Dexter, phone, no. Oh, we can read about, um, I should be able to read it. Did I not, did I? Oh, it should have been given to me in Poland. Hold on. Hmm. What did I miss? I was supposed to be. Ha I suppose the to have a profile on um, Bianca Cardolo, right? I don't need to text him right now. I don't need to call. I just need to get my suitcase. I keep some of my favorite objects in. There's nothing else I. All right, hold on. 
probably something I missed here. Mr. Dexter said you have. Oh, I have to talk to him. Yeah, that's it. Yes, sir. I missed that. Have a good trip, sir. Thank you. I think this guy would have stopped me on the way out or something. Looks like I've taken care of everything here. I should head to the airport for my trip to Venice. All right. Busy guy, Malachi. To the airport. Yeah, I do love these games just getting letting you like sort of travel all over the world as well. Like Yeah, Jane Jensen just uh sat a dossier on Bank Card all the information Dave sent me. Should start there. Okay, I should call Detective look. Brunetta. Detective Brunetta. Well, let's have a look. Murdered at age twenty one by hanging. Some of oh. these could have hundreds of matches. But I'm only considering historic people I think fit the general circumstances. Okay. Where's my mouse? There it is. Um, Anne Boleyn. Catherine Howard. Beheaded, beheaded. Childbirth. Tuberculosis. We haven't got a lot so far. Um, so let's, let's uh, like I said, call, call Detective Brunetta. Really wish you get a new Carmen San Diego game. Never played Bonjour. those. This is Malachi Rector. I need to speak with you about the death of Bianca Cardolo. I was told to expect your call. Meet me at 425 Aladue Colonne. That's the site of the murder. Thank you. I'll see you there. Okay. Murder bridge. We love a good Venice murder bridge, don't we? Oh, I love the, the vibes of this game, actually. I don't need to be there. Let's see what we can analyze from this guy. Detective Brunetta, or Inspector Brunetta, sorry. Red eyes, allergies, working long hours, little sleep. That would check out, I think. Loaded stomach, uh, stress induced acid reflux. Yeah, I think that's probably likely. Uh, smoker, smokes to avoid eating, thinks it makes him look sexy. High stress job, yeah. This is a guy who's stressed out. Uh, Well-worn coat. 20 years of detective. Shops at thrift stores. Addiction to dry cleaning. I'm gonna go with that. Yeah. A little bit of a... Uh... That must be Detective Brunetta. I wonder how Amble Dexter got the Italian police to work with me. There's definitely more to this than Dexter was willing to tell me. Kind of looks like an Italian, um, Colombo. A lot of it is abandoned. Are you I'm into it. That is correct. Oh, it's no lady Mr. there. Director? Yes. I've been told to answer any questions you have about the death of Bianca Cardolo. I can't say I understand why. Well, I'm glad to know where you stand, Detective. Mm -hmm. Let's get started, if you don't mind. It's always good to know your source. You won't mind telling me something about yourself? That depends on what you want to know. Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a high-profile case, isn't it? You've been working on it around the clock. That's right. Never let you go a case yeah, like this. Yeah, like, analyzing people what gives you, like, dialogue options, I think. <clears throat> Thank you, Pagan. <laughs> I'm not trying to find her killer. I just need information. And you're a luckier man than I. But if you mean you'll stay out of my way, then I'm glad for it. You've been a detective for a long time. Twenty years, at least. That's right. Someone told you about me? Your experience is obvious. I will take that as a compliment. I think, nah, I mean, your, your coat's raggedy. Do you know the Cardolo family personally? I'm not a part of that high society, even if I have the time to have a social life, which I don't. You said you were told to answer my questions. Can I ask <laughs> by whom? You don't know? I'm not in the habit of asking questions I know the answer to. I was told it came from a mayor's office. You were hired by Senor Ricardolo, perhaps? Mm, I can't tell you who hired me. I can't tell you who hired me. I see. 
I suppose I'll just have to keep my guesses to myself. Tell me about Bianca Cardello. She was a popular figure in Venice. Everyone knew her. She was even named the most beautiful woman in the city several years ago. The public wants her killer found, and so do I. Okay. Got a data point. Tell me about Bianca Cardello's murder. We know she was followed while walking home from a concert. She ran. The killers caught up with her here where we're standing. They hanged her from this bridge. Sounds familiar. In fact, I read that much in the papers. I can't read your mind, <clears throat> Mr. Rector. If you have questions, ask them. She was walking home from a concert alone? Yes, her husband is a very busy man. As I understand, she often attended artistic events without him. Was she robbed? Molested? No, her purse fell into the canal. We retrieved it. Her money and credit cards were all there. Her jewelry was untouched. There were no signs of rape. Were there any witnesses? No one came forward, even after Senor Cardolo put out a personal request. Do you have any leads on the killers? No. If you want my opinion, such as it is, they were professionals. They left no physical evidence on the bridge mm -hmm. or on the body. <clears throat> Even the rope was generic. Tell me about the Cardolo family. Dante Cardolo, her husband, is extremely wealthy and a very important man in local politics. Well-respected man, for good reason. Her father, Venetian royalty. It would be difficult to find a more distinguished bloodline anywhere in Italy. This I crime see. is all of Venice in shock, and we have no leads. We haven't found anyone who would want to hurt her. And yet, someone did. Yes. If you want my opinion, her family had nothing to do with it. But that begs the question, eh? Who did? Hmm. Good Those question. are all the questions I have, Detective. Ah, the old Maybe lady's getting away. I don't know what this was all about, eh? I doubt it. Even I don't know what it's all about. But I wish you luck in finding Bianca's killer. I'll need more than wishes. Arrivederci, Mr. Hector. Arrivederci. I need to see if that old lady knows anything. <clears throat> I got an achievement for cooperating with the authorities. I wonder if there's uh, one where you don't cooperate. Pardon, Signora. May I have a word with you? Yes. What can I do for you? Hold on. We need to. I need to get to my dialogue position. Give me a second. Uh, severe hairstyle, uh, hides drugs and bun, I doubt that. Retired teacher, thinks style is sexy. She's most likely a retired teacher. Um, touches neck, lost her soul jewelry, has a sore throat, scratching an itch. Hmm. It's gonna spoil it, I did it? Oh. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I was trying to understand what you were saying there. You did it, you did the murder. Stop streaming, Isaac, how could you? I don't know why, I was like, uh, when I just saw the first half, like, gonna spoil it, I was like, please don't spoil the game. Uh, hi, welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on that one. Maybe we can uh, guess from the others. Threadbare clothes, can't see well, moth infestation in home, low income, possibly likely, yeah. Calloused fingers, stream musician, compulsive finger rubber, works in dial factory. Hmm. She's a stream musician. Let's say that she has a saw throw. Let's have a think. Not all of them are correct. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Let's have a think about this then. Maybe the clothes are wrong. Moth infestation? Oh. Uh, I think it could be that then. Works in a dial factory? Maybe she's retired. Compulsive finger of it, perhaps. Hmm. I don't think it's either, either of them are wrong. Um, lost or sold jewelry. That's entirely possible, actually.
There we go. <clears throat> so she's a retired teacher. She's lost some jewelry. Callous fingers because she's a string musician. And she has a low income. The old woman must own that rundown house. They're a matched set. Hmm. Let's chat. Yes, signore. What can I do for you? Is this your home, signora? It's lovely. Ah, oh, grazie. It's been in my family for four generations. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Malachi Rector. Una sera, signore. I am Caterina Falone. Hmm. I noticed that you seem <clears throat> nervous, Signora. You would be nervous too if unspeakable things happen just outside your front door. I do not wish to talk about it. I would like to speak with you about the murder, Signora. It's too bad. I want to no, talk about I'm it. I'm sorry. I won't speak about that. I already said as much to the police. But I am not the police. You can talk to me. I don't know you, Signore. And it is too terrible to talk about. No. Oh. Thank you for speaking with me, Signora. Well, she it hasn't got much to say. It was a pleasure to speak with such a fine gentleman. Arrivederci. Okay. Well, uh, she does not want to talk about it. That's fair. That's fair. What have we got here? I'm just trying to see if there's anything else to look at. Bianca ran from the killers, and they caught her here. It's probable that this location was random, but not the public hanging. Her death was meant to be noticed. Hmm. Hold on. Yeah. The police thoroughly swept the bridge for clues, and I don't see anything unusual about it. We can't brain it. Okay. There's something Ooh, on the bottom hello. of the canal. Could it have fallen from Bianca's purse? Interesting. We've got more information, though. Well, we've got two things. Uh, often referred to as the most beautiful woman in her home city. Cleopatra, uh, Cornelia Africana, uh, Countess Marie uh, Velevska, I pronounce that, Ines de Zuniga y Velasco, uh, Livia Drusilla, Marie Antoinette. Obviously, there's a layer up as we uncover more. Can we get the thing out the canal? That wouldn't do. Okay, we probably need something to actually fish it out. So, let's have a little look around. Let's go to Cardolo's home. Come in, Mr. Rector. Please, sit down. Thank you, Senor <clears throat> Cardolo. I'm sorry to intrude at a time like this. I've been asked to speak with you, and that request came directly from the U.S. Embassy. Impressive. What interest does the United States have in my wife's murder? Do you think it was a terrorist act? That voice I actor. Hunt Bianca. I don't have the answer, Signore. I'm still investigating. <sighs> Very well. I've already been over everything with the police a dozen times, but I'll do what I can to help you. Yeah, like, whoever's playing this guy, he sounds like I can't confirm this, but I'm pretty sure it's Andrew Chaikin. Who was the voice of um, Paperweight in uh, Seven Max Season Three? It would help me to know more about you. Very well. Sounds a lot like him. Was Bianca your first wife? See, si, I worked hard all my life, and I'm not ashamed to say I enjoyed my youth. But a man who wishes to accomplish certain things in life needs a wife. Bianca was everything I needed. She had beauty, style, connections. I doubt I will ever find her equal. Hold on. Let me see if I can do a little bit of brain work on him. Puffy red eyes. Um, recently emotional, insomniac, clinically depressed. I mean, it would make sense if he was recently emotional, considering his, his wife just died. Um... Bright tie, optimistic, sony personality, colorblind, narcissistic likes attention. Could possibly have been narcissistic. He's a rich guy. Dark suit has goth mentality. Likes to blend to the background, grieving. I'm pretty sure he's grieving. Um, shaking hands, drinks too much coffee, has a nerve disorder, anxious, feels violated. 
Maybe that would check out. Yeah. This is a man who has lost his wife, but is also pretty rich. Uh, yeah, that would, that would make sense. Cardello certainly looks like a politician. Attractive enough to get votes, innocuous enough to keep them. Tell me about your work. I am Consigliere of Venice. I used to practice law, but for now my focus is exclusively on politics. Venice is struggling, as is all of Italy. It will take the best of all of us to save her, if we can. Okay. Tell me about Bianca. What would you like to know? Uh, did you play the piano? Did your wife play piano? No, she was quite musical, but she preferred dance. Interesting bit of she was in a classical dance company before ah. we were wed. As for the piano, Bianca loved to entertain, and music was always a part of such evenings. How did you meet Bianca? Bianca's family is one IMDb of the most says the voice actors Andrew Check it. Thought it was, yeah. It's basically the same voice he does for Bianca Paperweights sure. in Sam Max season three. So. Politician's wife. Check she loved meeting people and doing philanthropic work. I knew she would make the perfect wife for a man of my ambitions. Fortunately, her father agreed, and I was able to convince her to marry me, even though she was quite young at the time. How old was Bianca when you married her? She was 18 and I was 43, but she was very mature for her age. That sets up she red flags. She the life she wanted, and I could give it to her. She you was were... happy in our marriage, especially once our son came along. Hmm. I realize it is difficult to speak ill of the dead. But Bianca must have had some flaws. No one is perfect. Three of what else? A poisonous <laughs> snake. <laughs> Thank you, Bernard. No yeah, you might be a bit of a poisonous snake. Otherwise, I would throw you out of the house for that impudence. Oh, okay. As you say, getting to the truth is not always pleasant. She was a beautiful young woman. She had some insecurities. Never thought she was good enough, perfect enough. Perhaps I should be grateful for that. If she had been more confident, she might never have married me. I appreciate your honesty, Signore. Okay. Bianca quit dancing after you were married? Of course. It was hardly appropriate for the wife of a man in my position. How is that so? How old was Bianca when she had your son? It was a year after our marriage. She was 19. Does that have some relevance? We'll see. Okay, we've got a lot of uh, information. Oh, I suppose I can't. I must ask you about Bianca's murder. Can't act until I'm out of dialogue. If you must. Do you know who killed Bianca? No, she was a beautiful and gracious young woman. She had no enemies, nor do I. You're a politician with no enemies? Yeah, right. Tell me about the night it happened. Bianca wished to attend a concert. She had a number of musician friends from her student days. I declined to go with her. It was nothing important, and I preferred to get some work done. Now I wish I'd never allowed her to go out alone. You couldn't possibly have known. It's not your fault. I'm afraid I must get back to <clears> work. <throat> In times of fiscal crisis, one is not even allowed the solace of grief. You may stay and look around. I have told the staff that you are free to come and go. You'll find Bianca's bedroom through that door there. And before you ask, the house has plenty of rooms. Bianca liked having her own sanctuary. We were happily married. I would be the last person to judge such an arrangement. Thank you for your time, Signor Cardolo. Goodbye. That current's a little bit crunchy on this screen, but, uh... Sure. A wedding photo of Bianca and Dante Cardolo. She has a striking figure. What I can see of it around that large bouquet. Hmm. Flowers, huh? Ooh. White roses. Traditional for funerals and weddings. Appropriate since both are equally tragic. Oh, damn, dude. <laughs> White roses. Tr oh. 
I just the flowers. Uh, card. Sympathy cards for Bianca. That brings home the tragic aspect of all this, doesn't it? I have no use for those cards. Okay. Might be something there, but I haven't spotted it. Oh, let's hold on. Let's just have a quick, a closer look. Let me check. Oh, here we go. Florist putty. Florist's putty. The material can be surprisingly versatile. Yeah, the line she wouldn't have married me if she was more confident is sure a way to talk about a dead wife. I know, right? I hmm. don't think Senor Condello will miss this. But a putty. Sure. Let's have a look at uh, the information we got as well. Okay, so we've got five points now. Uh, age 19, she had a son. Cleopatra had one at 22. Countess Marie Valeska. That one seems to work. <clears throat> had a son, uh, Plastarchus, with her husband Leonidas I. Queen of Sparta. Uh, Livia Drusilla had a first son, Tiberius, at a young age for the time. 17. Princess Victoria. Mother of Queen Victoria had her first son at age 18. Married at age 18 to a 43 year old politician. Married at age 17 to Henry VIII, who was then 50. Uh, became co regent at age 14 with a 62 year old father. Ooh. Married at approximately 18 to Tiberius Gracchus Major, who was approximately 45. Uh, Countess Marie Valevska again. I, I think this one might be the what we're looking into. Married at 19 uh, to Athanasius Count Colonna Valevska, a man four times her age. Uh, married in her early teens to a half uncle, King Leonidas. Married at 16 to her first husband, Tiberius Cladius Nero, who was much older than her at 42. Uh, Prince of Victoria, married at 17 to Charles, Prince of Le Leiningen, and then 40. Loved to dance and was a talented ballerina. Anne Boleyn, uh, Marie Antoinette. Okay. Often referred to as the most beautiful woman in her home city. Oh, wait, we already saw that one. And then we, the murder. Okay, yeah. These are, we've had a look at all that now. Interesting. Do we have more to check as well? I believe that's a younger photo of Signora Filone, the woman ah. who lives near the site of Bianca's murder. Oh, this might help us with uh, getting more information out of her. She's wearing a Venetian Murano glass necklace. I don't recall seeing it on her when we met. Mmm, she had a missing necklace, didn't she? Yeah. That checks out. Let's look in Bianca's room then. He's gonna take his pills again. Takes him without water. Kinda hardcore. Her robe and slippers are still laid out, waiting for Bianca to come home. I wonder how long it will be before someone dares Hydration. put them away. I need to actually get some water. I will be right back. Ugh. We'll fill this up. Hydration. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <clears throat> what else can we find in this room then? The desk is 19th century Italian design. That would check out considering we are in Venice. Stamps. Postage stamps. Do people actually mail things anymore? Sometimes. Bianca's planner. It's open to the day she was murdered. She'd written in a concert for that evening, but there's nothing else relevant. Pen. Bianca kept some pens in here. No surprise, it is a writing desk. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. They look like drawers, but they're decorative. They don't actually open. Or do they? Nothing interesting. Oh. Nothing interesting. No? Nothing in... Nothing in... Are you sure it's nothing interesting? The notebook looks brand new. Stretch? Nah, I could stretch. Hey, how are you doing, South American Tanuki? Ugh. 
technically got a bit of a stretch as I went up to go for all, get some water, but... Oh, man. Hmm. Key slot, huh? I recognize that. It's a key slot, probably for a secret drawer. Hmm. I need the key. Broad and flat. Envelopes, tape, papers, clock, pen. Nothing interesting. Nothing. Blank envelopes. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'll be around here somewhere. The stool goes with the bed set. It looks rather useless. Dresser. It's got pointy shoes. Oh, wow. Wear gloves. Gloves. This is quite an assortment. Not many women wear gloves these days. I wonder what Bianca saw in them. Interesting. This glove is quite large. It would fit my hand. These overly large gloves are interesting, but I don't need to take them with me. Sure. More gloves. Gloves. Interesting. These over. Hmm. That must be Bianca's son. He's young to lose a mother. It appears to be an old family Bible. Really not my cup of tea. <laughs> okay. A lot of gloves. That's interesting. Nearly everything in this room matches. I prefer a more eclectic approach myself. This bed set is a 19th century reproduction. Expensive, but not valuable, or even in good taste. Damn, all right. Uh, I'm just seeing if there's anything else worth looking at here. It's paintings. Dance images and more family photos. Boring. Dance There's a light breeze tonight. Hmm. Maybe it's a thing that dropped out of her... Uh, purse that opens up the desk so let's have a think about what we might be able to do to get that get to that someone must have a love of dance or bare navels it doesn't do anything thank god all right malachi got a lot to say haven't you the cardola home is on one of the Something oldest and most man. prestigious canals in venice it's the perfect address for someone with ambition Okay, let's do a bit more exploring. Uh, let's go to Barosi's Antiques. Oh, wow. This is a nice place. Mr. Hector, it's a pleasure to see you. Welcome back to Venice. Thank you, Senor Barosi. Did you come about the figurine? Looks like Stan Lee. when you're ready to see it. <laughs> Signor Borosi, might I have a word? How can I help you, Mr. Rector? Do you carry Venetian Murano glass jewelry? I have a few good pieces. They're in the display behind you, if you care to take a look. Oh, okay. How is the antique business in Venice these days? Uh, how good can it be with this global recession? Italy is drowning in debt, and the protesters keep even the tourists away. In all honesty... I have never seen conditions so desperate. Fortunately, there's always a market for luxury items. The rich get richer even in a downturn. How can you say so? The EU is about to collapse. There are terrible days ahead for everyone. Uh, Didn't take out in 2014. The press love to feel. Hey, longer. hipster Henshaw, thank you for the follow. I'm afraid it is that bad. Unless we can find some brilliant leadership to steer the world out of this mess, things look very black. Well, I hope I am standing here in a year, and you can tell me you were wrong. So do I. Bianca Did Cardolo. You know Bianca Cardolo? Tell me more. Why, yes. That is, I knew who she was. She even came into the shop one time. Her murder is incomprehensible. I'm looking for information about her. I didn't know her personally, but I'll tell you what I can. What do you want to know? Tell me about Bianca Cardolo's family. 
Ah, well, you know I love Italian history. Her father, Senor Antonio Savoy, is from two of the most noble Italian families, the Savoys and the Capetians. <laughs> Rivederci, the Savoys, true believers. As you know, were the royal family in Italy <laughs> up until World War II. Interesting. Excelsior. Tell me about Bianca Cardolo's oh. husband. <laughs> Dante Cardolo. You know, he is from the Capetian family, just like Bianca's father. But they are distant cousins. He was very popular in Venice. He could have gone far in politics. But his support of the EU at any cost has the common people very angry. Only time will tell if his political okay. career survives. If indeed Italy survives. Thank you for the information. Seems to be a sort of uh, Eurosceptic Italy in this game. Was Bianca Cardolo wealthy? Oh yes. Both her birth family and her husband's family are extremely wealthy. There's no doubt about that. I see. It's none of my business, but why are you interested in Bianca Cardolo? Her story caught my eye, that's all. I can't blame you. It is a terrible thing. <clears throat> oh, Mr. Rector. Such a crime does nothing to help the city's morale. We could all use some good news, eh? If you learn anything new about Bianca Cantillo, please contact how, me. How are you? Absolutely. I'm good. How are you doing, Dragon Cat? Too. I'd like to see the figurine you mentioned in your letter. He's playing this, uh, gee, this gee. adventure game about Please. antiques and murder and secret agencies. I Got hope you'll man. find it to your liking. Well, I know well. your taste is excellent. Hmm. We'll see. Right. That's all for now. Thank you. As you wish. Can I? Oh, we gotta pop pills again. I love the music in this game so far. But I mean, it's Robert Holmes doing the music, so you know. Let's see what we can figure out from this figurine. Ah, oh, okay. Archangel Ivory. Um, Bagram Ivories, Bernini Bus. We've got to try and barely match this. Hogarth Portrait. Oh, that looks very similar. Okay. Lewis Chessman. Chess reasons with exaggerated and glum expressions that appear comical to the modern eye. That's got to be that. Um, Material Elephant Ivory, Synthetic Ivory, Walrus Ivory. Possibly walrus. I'm gonna go with that. Islamic ivory carvings. Medieval chess pieces. I'm gonna go with this. Yep, there we go. It means it's not Morbius. It's the name of the game. Yeah, it's Mor Morbius Empire Rising. That's actually the subtitle of Morbius 2. Um, okay. The figurine is an excellent find, Senor Barosi. It's a 12th century Lewis chessman piece. The British Museum and the Museum of Scotland each have part of the collection, so we might be able to get them to bid against each other. Marvelous. Can I assume our usual split? Of course. Oh, that is good news. Should I have it sent to your store in Manhattan? Please do. Oh, and ensure the hell out of it. Of course. Thank you. I'm not ashamed to say I will be glad for the money. Like I sound like discount Jim Cummings. It might actually be Jim Cummings. Considering he was in Gabriel Knight. Although I don't think he was in the remaster, so it probably isn't actually, come to think of it. Yeah, Jim Cummings was in the, was in the original Gabriel Knight. Um, he was the desk sergeant in that game, I think. Let's look at these. This Venetian necklace looks similar to the one Signora Felloni wore in her younger days. I think this one is worth a purchase. Let's pick it up. Maybe if I'd we like to buy this get necklace. the get the old lady a, a necklace, Let me get she might be able you. to might be a bit more forthcoming with information. Shall I you know. Put it on your account, please. There you are. You have a good eye, as always, Mister Rector. Am I the only one who reads Morbius things? That how that used to be the official name of Sonic's World? No, someone someone actually mentioned that earlier in the chat. So you're not the only one. Um. All right. Let's have a look and see if there's anything interesting. Anything else interesting here? I mean, 
lion statue. I hate lions. Unfortunately, they're very popular in antiques. He does have a reason to hate lions. One did kill his mother. That is definitely completely true, by the way. You see it in the prequel comic I showed at the beginning of the stream. Um, a boat pole. That actually might come in handy. And also, it looks like an actual physical item I can pick up rather than part of the background. So I'm going to take it. I'd like to take this boat pole. Can you put it on my account? Of course. Oh. Hmm. That might be handy for fishing out that item from the, uh... The thing. Protester. It's a protester. They're thick as flies in the city. I'm not interested in hearing about her politics. All right, damn. I think what we, we've got what we needed from this particular area. Did he, Malachi just moonwalk out of the building? Okay. Yeah, so we have two reasons to be here now, actually. Um, let's use... Actually, maybe... Oh, I've got an idea. If I combine it with that... Yeah! Here we go. So now we can stick that in and get the point to stick the thing up and pull it out. Don't fall in, Malachi. You use your putty rod. Drag the po boat pole to move it through the water. I have a feeling this brass hook dropped from Bianca's purse. I'll take it with me. Okay. Do we get everything then? I don't see anything else. Okay. A brass hook. Interesting. What's that about? This brass hook was under the. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's go and give this necklace to this old lady, and see if she's uh. She'd enjoy having it, cause you know, resembles the one she used to have. Although the police probably didn't notice that, but then again, that checks out. Well, you know, it's a it's a brass hook. It might not really arouse suspicions that much. That kind of junk might quite often be at the at the bottom of like a canal. Might not be, have been something that aroused suspicion. Um, hold on. Can I still brain? Oh, I can, but it's just that. Okay. Hey, I'll take this. Signore Filoni. I was so struck by your elegance during our early Malachi conversation. Malachi flirting with old I ladies. I saw this in a shop today, and for some reason, had the idea that it must be worn by you and no other. Oh, Signore, how could you have known? Eh? I had a similar necklace that I wore for many years, but uh, recently, well, I was forced to part with it. Oh, she doesn't have much money. I shouldn't accept it, but. It has been years since I've received tokens from such a handsome young man, eh? How can I refuse? Mini grazie, signore. Thank you. It's my pleasure. All right, now... You might be able to tell me a bit more. I'm sorry to trouble you with <clears throat> a distressing subject, signore. But may I ask you about the night of the murder? I really don't want to talk about that. I'm frightened. Of course you are. Who wouldn't be? But I'm not the police, and this information is not for the courts. It will stay between you and me. Well... A musician like yourself? Your ears are very keen. Yes. I heard a scream, as if her mouth was covered by a hand. You looked out the window. What did you see? There were two men, all in black. Mm. Slender. Small. Did you see their faces? No, their heads, their faces. They were covered in black, as if they were in a play. I swear. Oh, perhaps I've been foolish. I should have stayed quiet. I, I must go. Thank you for the necklace. Signora. Okay. That's some information, though. I don't think it's given us anything new about... Um... Oh, actually has it. Oh no, we have we have, we have some new things here. Uh, her family was uh, among the most wealthy, 
Abigail Adams, um, Anne Boleyn, Cleopatra, there's Countess Marie again, Olivia Drusilla. She seems to be cropping, cropping up quite a bit as well. Same with Marie Antoinette. Um, husband was unpopular due to his politics. Again, Countess Marie, Olivia Drusilla, and these two. Husband was descended from the same prestigious bloodline as father. Uh, okay, there's no... She's married a... Oh, oh, okay. Charles Darwin married his cousin? I didn't know that. Might have known that, actually. It does sound familiar. Hmm. Um... Look at Drusilla again. Interesting. Okay. Let's head back to uh, AD. That's partly why he started to study evolution, at least from uh, from what I've heard. Oh, interesting. I want to go back to the Cardolos home and see if this brass hook has any applications in Bianca's room. Because there's clearly something that was missed. Look at that. Ah, and there we have it. A key card. I wonder what this key card goes to. I should find out. Hmm. Prescription cream for plaque psoriasis. Has Bianca's name on it. Plaque psoriasis. It's a cheap prepaid phone. Who did Bianca need to speak to that she couldn't call on a regular cell phone? A burner phone. Let's see who Bianca was talking to. <clears throat> I need to find out who Gabriella is. Gabriella. I'll put this in my phone's contacts. Okay. I guess we can call this Gabriella then. Pronto? Am I speaking with Gabriella? Si. Who is this? I'm calling about Bianca Cardolo. I found your number on her phone. I thought someone might be calling me. Are you with the police? I'm an independent investigator. May we meet? I work near the Doge Palace. There's a cafe on the north side of the plaza. Uh, can you meet me there? Doge yes. Palace? I'll see you soon. Excuse me? Um, it's funny, I've been watching someone I'm subscribed to uh, going through some old Victorian ladies magazines and a common thread is that the magazine tells people to stop marrying their cousins. That sounds familiar. I think I, I might... Am I subscribed to that person as well? Which which uh, YouTube is that? Because I think it's possible that I'm subscribed to them as well. I think I might have uh, seen that in my, in my subscription somewhere. Or maybe it was a recommended video. I don't remember. Anyway, let's go to Doge Palace, I guess. Is that a real place? Doge Plaza. Oh, I, I like this background. It's got nice colors. What a stunning view. There really is no city like Venice. Let's analyze it. Um, engineering nits. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't think I'm subscribed to that one then. But um, there is somebody I'm subscribed to who does a lot, like looks at a lot of vintage stuff, uh, like that. Hair, and makeup, highlight, face, vein. Want to suntan? Or trying to seduce me? I don't know about that. She's a bit vain. I could see that being true. Touches her hair. Uh, highly conscious of social image. Try to use shampoo. Or oh, feels insecure. Maybe she's highly conscious of a social image. Lean and muscular. Dancer, bicyclist, bicyclist postal worker. I think she seems like a dancer, actually. Hmm, there we go. 
Interestingly, um, Bianca was also a dancer. Maybe they had like a, a secret little uh, dancing uh, hobby going on behind the scenes. Because um, her husband didn't want her to be seen as a dancer. Are you Gabriella Spira? Si, Senor Hector. You're investigating Bianca's death? That's right. May I? Please, sit down. About Bianca? Yes. Tell me about Bianca's family. She came from a very important family. Her father is Antonio Savoy. Her mother's father, he was a highly respected magistrate in Venice. A good coffee? Not just anyone can be friends with someone like that. Her family was very, um, protective of Bianca. But they were very fond of me. Tell me about Bianca. Tell me about Bianca. Mm, she adored the music. She loved to go to concerts. And she loved to dance. She continued to dance after she married Dante Cardolo? Yes. But she only went to the studio to practice when no one else was there. How did you meet Bianca? We were in the same dance company. Mm. Do you know, we were rivals at first. But I came to love Bianca like a sister. I can't believe she's dead. And to die in such a way... It's horrible. It certainly is. I'm sorry for your loss. Do you have any idea who might have killed Bianca? No. Everyone loved her. She was very sweet. Especially when you consider the importance of her family and all her money. She was not vain at all. He must have been... How do you call it? A serial killer. Random. Possibly. Yes. That's likely. Hmm. But I don't think so. I think there's something to it. What's the name of your dance studio? I'd like to look up some of your performances. Would you? I'm so flattered. We have a recital next week. It's La Compagnia Venezia. Excellent. I'll look it up. The Venetian Company? It's pretty... It's, I'm, I'm guessing that's what that translates to. I don't actually know Italian, but it seems close enough to, to kind of... indicate it. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, Two beautiful young women. Best of friends. You knew Bianca better than anyone else, didn't you? Well, I was her dearest friend. Bianca trusted me with her life. And with her secrets? What did you know about Bianca that most people did not? It wasn't anything she told me, but... Bianca was very, um, worried about her looks. She was not confident. Was there something specific about Bianca's looks that she didn't like? Oh, I don't know. You know how women are. The slightest flaw. I really don't think Bianca would wish me to speak of it. Hey, do it! Subscribing uh, but, two months of Prime. Ta -da! You this, Thank you so much. Nice to see you. Bianca could have gone far. Perhaps become the wife of the Prime Minister one day. As it was, she was content to marry Dante and stay in Venice. Tell me about Dante Condolo, Bianca's husband. She was very happy with Dante. It was her dream it's to marry time. a politician. And, well, she yep. liked the attention of <laughs> sure the <is>. <laughs> uh. Tell me about Bianca's son. Paolo. Oh, what a beautiful boy. She adored him, of course. She didn't mind having a child while she herself was so young. Not Bianca. She loved it. In fact, she was expecting another child when she died. Really? That's a pretty big detail, actually. Did you say Bianca was pregnant when she died? You didn't know. Oh, now I... I don't know if the family would approve of me saying so. It's quite all right. I won't tell anyone. How far along was she? About uh, three months. The test said he was a girl. She was so excited. Uh. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Sometimes it all becomes too real. I apologize for upsetting you. I think that's all the questions I have. Thank you for meeting me, Signorina Spira. Grazie. If there's anything more I can do for you, please call. I will. Arrivederci. 
Italian's one of those languages that I've never learned really anything from. I might someday. Nope, is it pill time? I really love this background, actually. It's really pretty. Okay, let's see. Oh, we've, we've almost got all the details now. Okay. Pregnant with a second child at age 21. Abigail Adams. Olivia Drusilla. <sighs> Princess Victoria. Frankie Jim is married to a powerful political man. Also the daughter of a king of Sparta and mother of another. Hmm. Known to be ambitious, composed, and took an active role in the running of the Empire throughout her life. I think it might be Olivia Drusilla. Or possibly... Because Olivia Drusilla seems to come up in the most of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten of them. Uh, Olivia Drusilla. And as for Princess Victoria, one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, not as many for sure. I think Olivia just thought it was possibly. Uh, well, we need to find the last data point before we can confirm that. Okay. We also have this 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 key card. Bianca kept this key card in a secret drawer. I should figure out what it opens. Oh, hold on. There actually might be something else in a room too up in there. Possibly. Oh, there's the Dance Academy now. That's an entirely new location. Let's go there. <laughs> ah, this will be what it's for. Yep. I love the colors of the floor. Feet. <laughs> it's just called feet. There's no way to even know who that is. I could identify her by her feet. How dramatic. Uh, I don't know anyone in that shot. Bianca as the cursed princess of Swan Lake. My god, her hands. Overly large and reddened by a severe skin condition. Perhaps that's why Bianca had no more grandiose plans than being the wife of the mayor of Venice. Interesting. It's the psoriasis that, uh... She had cream for it. Those costumes are stylish. Possibly why she was so no like self-conscious as well. Getting psoriasis on, along the hands is probably. Oh, that's why she wears the gloves. She has the large gloves because uh, she wants to cover up her hands a lot. That makes sense. A prima ballerina. I don't recognize her. Is there anything else here? I could get my leg that high, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> a ballet bar, polished by thousands of hands and feet. Okay. Is that, is that the last piece of information, or no? Uh, mirror? Bianca must have danced in front of that mirror a hundred times. I don't believe in ghosts, but if she had one, that's where it would be. I need a record of it, but I don't want to carry the frame with me. Any record of it? Hmm. Take a photo with the smartphone? Good. Now that's an interesting data point. There we go. I've learned enough about Bianca now to attempt Here my analysis. Here we go. I'm really vibing with this game. Like I said, I might not have the best reviews, but I'm, I, it's really like got an interesting tone and ideas behind it. Um, Bianca's hands were overly large and had a skin and had a skin condition. Okay. I still think our best option in this regard is uh, is Livia Drusilla. She seems to turn up more than anybody else. Um, let's see, 
pregnant at age, uh, second son at age 20, 21. Dreamed to be married to a powerful man, ambitious composed, and took an active role in the running of the empire. Mother was the daughter of a respected magistrate. Mother was the daughter of a Roman magistrate. A uh, family among the most wealthy in Europe. A very ancient wealthy family. Husband was unpopular due to politics. First husband supported Mark Anthony over Julius Caesar, an unpopular choice. Uh, husband was descended from the same prestigious bloodline as father. First husband descended from the same uh, cloudy, cloudy bloodline as a father. Father was uh, from two of the most prestigious Italian bloodlines, Capis Capetian and Savoy. Uh, descended from both the Livy and Claudi families. Age 19 had a son. Age 17 had a son. Married at age 18 to a 43 year old. Married at age 16 to a 42 year old. Uh, often referred to as the most beautiful woman in a home city. Frequently described as the most beautiful woman in Rome. Olivia Drusilla. 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 Interesting. Okay. Let's, uh... Let's cover Olivia Drusilla a bit more, then. The wife of Augustus Caesar. Olivia Drusilla's first marriage was to Tiberius Claudius Nero, a man with several decades her senior... Sorry, a man several decades her senior. While Livia was pregnant with her second son, uh, she met Augustus, who fell in love with her immediately. After persuading or forcing Nero to divorce her, Livia and Augustus married, and her two sons were raised as Caesar's own. An ambitious woman, Livia was quite influential on Augustus' rule, unquestionably contributing to his success as a ruler, including the formation of the Roman Empire. I think that completes my investigation in Venice. I'll let Dexter know I'm done and on my way home. All right. Good stuff. I'm taking the first flight in the morning. Oh, this is pre-rendered. to see me straight from the airport. Won't take a report from the phone. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Big secret side. Oh, goodness. Ninjas? Blackhead coverings, Filoni's testimony, Bianca's killers, Asian, Japanese 33%. Oh my god, he's calculating the, the likelihood of their different. <laughs> I could have just asked for an introduction. Oh. I gotta say, he's like, he's like BBC Sherlock, this character, you know? Right, okay. So, what is that about? Two men ransacked my hotel room in Venice, and then they ransacked me. They took photos of my passport. Why? What did the intruders look like? Their faces were covered, but they were Asian. I'd guess Chinese, but I can't be sure. I apologize, Mr. Rector. I can assure you that I had no idea you would be in any danger. This was a fact-finding mission, nothing more. Please. If you would be so kind as to tell me what you learned about Bianca Cardolo. She just did a freaking did DNA. That's in some dude's face. Yeah. I think the point is, is that he's kind of like very focused on detail. No. So he picks up like tiny little they details. There must be so I just kind of made some assumptions based on what he could see. Her with Livia Drusilla. She was the wife of Augustus Caesar. Had a father descended from two prominent bloodlines, the Livy and the Claudi. Her mother was a daughter of a magistrate, and her first husband shared a bloodline with her father's family. She was married <clears> at 18 to a much older politician, whose politics were not popular at the time. She had two children with him. She was by all accounts wealthy, beautiful, and ambitious. Just like Bianca Cardolo. So, you do associate Bianca Cardolo with Livia Drusilla? I already said, no. Look at her hands. Augustus appreciated beauty, too much so. He would have never married a woman with a physical flaw like this one. That's very insightful. Thank you. We would like to continue to work with you, if you're amenable. No. <clears throat> no. The fee was generous. I want to know what this is all about. The truth is, I can't trust you. Not yet. Perhaps in time, as we work together. I understand, a man of your intellect, how curious you must be. How frustrating it is not knowing everything you want to know. I'm not frustrated. I'm done. 
If you need me again, you know my terms. Would it matter to you if I told you that your work for us could be of invaluable service to your country and your countrymen? Maybe the entire world. Entire world? <laughs> no. You're not seriously going to let him go. I am. We wait. We wait for the pattern. It's kind of funny how there's still a little bit of animation jank in the pre-rendered cutscenes. Yes, I think she's still out there. We'll do everything we can to locate her. You have my word, Senator. We can't risk them finding her first. Give me time. They think she's dead, mm. so they'll be off her trail, at least for a while. Very well. Keep in touch. Uh, I'd like to hear more. Still working? Won't you come up to bed? I will, darling. Soon. Okay. <clears throat> Something's happening there. Chapter 2, The Wheel Turns, Cairo. Let's do a save game as well, just in case a game crashes or something. We're going to keep playing, of course. We're only an hour and 40 into the stream, so... Uh... Oh, I've seen this bit before. This bit was in the, the demo, I think. So, yeah. What you doing in Cairo? Military or ex-military, American or British. Attack? Expensive car, good clothes. Carjacking? Mugging? Rape? Likelihood. Okay. Need some help? No, I've already called someone. I fixed engines in the military. <laughs> Twink. <laughs> Jeeps and tanks mostly, but, uh, you know, I know my way around. <laughs> Gun. <laughs> Just trying to help. I think I can fix this. Or I can keep walking. I'll pay you if you fix it. Otherwise, I'll be standing here all night. No problem. I'm David Walker, by the way. I'll get started. You don't need to be rude, Malachi. <clears throat> I think that should do it. Try starting her up. <laughs> Just runs him over. He's like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Some money, Malachi. How many dollars? Two hundred dollars? Three hundred dollars? Detective. Hide wallet. Here you go. I have to go straight to the airport, so. Oh, there he goes. A mysterious, benevolent man who fixes cars. Pretty lucky that he happened to run into a guy who just likes to fix cars out in the out in the desert. It's very fortunate. <laughs> okay, here we are in 
Cairo, I guess. Canopic chest client. I should take a look at my dossier on the Canopic chest and review my Canopic. notes. Canopic, okay. Uh, ready for your transmission on the Canopic chest tomorrow at 7 a.m. Greenwich. Imperative that both chest and paperwork be authenticated as valid and legal uh, before we confirm bank transfer to Mr. Masri. Okay. Hmm. That's all we got so far. Canopic chest. Used by the ancient Egyptians, Canopic chest stored the Canopic jars into which certain organs from the body were placed during the mummification process. That's what I actually assumed, yeah. This was done in accordance with the belief that one's body needed to be perfectly preserved for the journey into the afterlife. The first Canopic chest was simple and wooden, but they became more elaborate over time, particularly those created by the pharaohs. One of the most famous is King Tutankhamun's Canopic chest, which was stolen from the Cairo Museum in 1992. Was it by the British? Samuel Lessing. German archaeologist Samuel Lessing is best known for his scholarly work on King Tutankhamun. His research, translation work, and close study of artifacts from King Tut's tomb have contributed greatly to the body of knowledge on Egypt's most famous ruler. Egypt? Why did I pronounce it like that? Egypt. Um, Lessing began his field work while studying in Oxford and later at Cambridge, taking part in some of the most notable discoveries in the field at the time and quickly building his reputation early in his career. His name has even become known in the general public for its discoveries and his two books on King Tut. His reputation was tarnished in 2007 by accusation from the Egyptian Historical Society over the authenticity of a selection of artifacts presented to them by the by Lessing, although his charges were later dropped. Uh, Horemheb. The last pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, Horemheb was born a commoner, but rose through military and political ranks throughout his life. Among other positions, he was an advisor of King Tutankhamun and commander-in-chief of his army, as well as being the young pharaoh's officially recognized heir. Not give me any information to play with? No? Okay. Wicker furniture. Here's a general rule. Nothing valuable ever comes in wicker. That's fair. That's in the closet. Nothing. A wire hanger. Those I always come in handy. I don't to carry around a wire hanger at the moment. At the moment. But, I mean, it's a handy aim to have in an adventure game, let's be honest. My carry-on bag. <clears throat> it's a pretty small suitcase, all things considered. If I'm going out on the streets, I suppose I should take this with me. Hey! Generic Fyeman with the Raid Party of 3, welcome to the stream. I'm playing a, uh, a Change Engine Adventure game. Mr. Masri recommended this hotel, said it was pleasant, and right next to his shop. In point of fact, it's a pit. Yeah, On the other hand, not at the least most, I can uh, get a look at his shop before our meeting tomorrow. Not the nicest place. I could use some sleep, but I should look around the neighborhood and try to learn something about Masri before our meeting tomorrow. Okay. It's a stock photograph blown up and printed at a local print shop. Badly framed. Well, uh, anything else to look at here? Doesn't appear so. Pillows? The hotel has thoughtfully provided four pillows, in case I want to smother myself in the middle of the <laughs> night. What were you playing, by the way, Generic Fire Demon? Background's a little bit crunchy here as well. I wonder if it's upscaled. Doing an art stream. Ah, cool. Garbage cans, garbage cans, motor oil. Hey, that can I come don't in have handy. a need for motor oil at the moment. Okay, but you might at some point. I want to keep it in mind. Abandoned car. Uh, seven one to sort out. Mm, just got a Masri's Emporium, I guess. That's Mr. Masri's shop. Not exactly high end. Drawing a fire blue theme to, learn to more which. about Masri before our meeting tomorrow, so I can anticipate how much trouble he's going to be. A fire blue themed witch sounds very cool. Magnificent Cairo. What a fascinating city. Of course, the best parts of it are over there, and I'm over here. The Seven Wonders Hotel. 
The first wonder is that anyone stays here. <laughs> I wonder how long that car has been sitting there. Since the Nixon administration, perhaps. Have a little walk around then. Is the way in. Cairo Youth Hostel. Thankfully, I've never had to stay in one of these. Let's, uh, let's go in. It's closed for the evening. Oh, never mind then. Let's not go in. Let's see if there's anything else over here. Oh, wow. You can really uh, have a look around, can't you? Ooh. Hostel? Hi. Greetings, sir. Would you like a room? No. I just thought I'd look around. I'm sorry, but you can't enter unless you're staying here. I need to see a registration card. Okay. She's young and formidable. I don't have any reason to be in here yet anyway. We drink the oil. I, I think he's drank enough oil, honestly. A Roman aqueduct. It connects to the Nile River and was quite the achievement in its time. It's no longer in use, but it's impressive that it's still standing. An open-air garbage pit. How convenient. It's such a waste of energy to have to lift a lid. Hey, Bex. How's it going? All right, well. I have no reason to be here. Oh, the double-click is a teleport. Like, if you want to quick travel to somewhere. That makes sense. He certainly takes his time sometimes. He's shuffling along slowly. Come on, man. Looks like a private residence. Let's go in. I don't need to go in there. Oh. Crates? Wooden crates. Impromptu seating? A lorry accident? Exit to alley. Aye, that's bound to be fun. Let's go into the alleyway. Nothing bad could happen in an alleyway. It's a dumpster for trash. Yep. It's a wooden shipping crate. Hmm. I don't have a reason to do anything with that crate at the moment. At the moment. Uh, object. An object. There's also a light switch here. Let's turn that on first. So you can see what the object in the dark is. That didn't work. Oh well. There's something back there, but it's too dark to see what it is. Hmm. A public trash can. Let's look inside. There's nothing I need in that trash can. You sure? Lady of the Dunes. That's a bit ambitious. A bar. Why not? Hookers are used to smoke flavored tobacco. The smoke is filtered through water before it's inhaled, so there's no nicotine or tar. Hmm. Oh, I've got some uh, guarded, resentful expression. Ex con or suspecting trouble, dislikes foreigners, is missing a rerun of friends. I don't think that one's true. Uh, either one of these are possible. Overly muscular physique. Does heavy manual labor. Lifts weight to be tough. Competes in Ironman tournaments. Uh, not about that way either. Rough hands and scarred knuckles. Has a self-cutting compulsion. I don't think so. Frequently gets in fights. Scarred from a dodgeball accident in interview. I think it's got to be the frequently gets in fights. Um, sharp, calculating eyes. Wearing lizard contact lenses. Sharp, intelligent, quick thinker. He's an accountant. It's possible he's an intelligent, quick thinker. Mouth is always moving, smiling, has an oral fixation, nervous tick. He's a liar and a con man. I think so. Wearing a nice jacket in a dive bar. He's a fashionista. Considers himself important. He's got off work at a desk job. I think he considers himself important. Flashy jewelry. Greedy, likes to show off his money. It's a good look, charm, flamboyant sense of style. Mm, greedy would make sense. Let's say... Dislikes foreigners and uh, lifts weights to be tough. 
Perfect. Got them dead to rights. Good cheese in that trash can. Unfortunately, I'm not playing Wallace in this one, so, you know. Those two look like locals. Perhaps they know something about Masri. Worth asking? Evening, gentlemen. My name is Rector. Mind if I join you? Yeah, sure. Sit down. I'm Hasim. This is Sa. What do you need? Are you from around here? Oh yeah, I know Cairo real good. You looking for a tour guide, maybe? Mm, I can right. show you whatever you like. Good places to get laid, know what I mean? What do you like, Mr. Rector? Women? Men? Boys? That's not what I'm after. But thanks for the mm. lesson in class. What? Oh yeah, no problem. Do you know Mr. Yusuf Masri? He owns a shop down the street. Yeah, I know Mr. Masri. I know him very well. Such cool red flag. I know a lot yep. Of people. Oh, what can you tell me about Masri? The thing is, I don't know you. Know what I mean? You know what they say about talking to strangers. <laughs> Goodbye. I must be going. A pleasure talking with you. Yeah, sure. Let's speak to the bartender instead. The bartender looks like a decent sort. Given his age and bearing, he's probably the owner. I like the camera angle I've chosen for this, with like the bartender like right at the front, and having this sort of character approach like that. That's really cool. Good evening. Welcome to the Lady of the Dunes, sir. What can I do for you? Is this your establishment? Yes, sir. There's some Jägermeister behind him. You must know the neighborhood. <laughs> oh, well. not Jägermeister. Yes, like right behind his head. Oh, that he moves. It's basically the same bottle. Do you know Mr. Yusuf Masri? He owns a shop down the street. I know him. What can you tell me about him? Nothing. It's better to stay clear of offending that man. But talk to those two over there in the corner. Hasim knows him well. Okay. Thanks for the tip. Yes, sir. I guess I'll go back and chat to these guys again. Despite the red flags. I wonder what it would take for me to lose my stranger status with Hasim. I have a feeling it will involve money, if not humiliation. Yeah. God knows what tobacco mix is in that hookah. If it even is tobacco. I'll refrain. They serve local beer and liquor. I don't want to drink. I need to be sharp for my meeting in the morning. That's fair. I wonder what it would take. Okay. I have a think. Do I need information on here to play with? It's probably comfortable. Hmm. I think, well, how, how would I get ingratiate myself with these guys. I don't see any way to alter the air vent. That little air vent must be overworked trying to cool this in. Hmm, maybe there's something we can do outside. Anything over here? It's just a wooden cart. There's nothing I need. Alleyway. I mean, that's the vent right there. That air vent goes into the bar. I can't reach it. It's a dumpster for. Tr hmm. That building has a fire escape. I don't have a reason to do any. Are you sure? What about moving it to the vent? Hint on this one. Because there's an in-game hint system, so I can probably figure that out, but uh hmm. let's see if there's anything I missed in here. Oh wow, okay, that's more than I expected. Hookah God knows what Maybe a game of darts. It's a well-used dartboard. Hmm. It's 
a little chilly standing right here. Wow, ah, that went way off. Malachi, man. Oh. Hold on, I see it's the it's Why the... is my aim off? There's something I'm not accounting for. There's the the draft through the dark through the through the vent. Hmm. If I aim for this nine. Yeah, okay. Interesting, okay. The posters are almost as bad as the wallpaper. Shadow the vent, perhaps? Good evening. Welcome to the lady. I noticed the dartboard. Popular game in here? For those who can pay. Be careful playing Hasim, sir. He's been playing here for 20 years. He knows all the tricks. Oh. I'll keep that. Just levitate a glass at me. Thanks okay. for the tip. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Think. Hmm. I think we have to play darts against him and see if we can beat him. Either by using the wind to our advantage Hashim. or altering Star. the vent. Hey, sit down, Mr. Rector. Do you play darts? Only a little. Want to play a friendly game? It's 50 bucks a game, US. I win, you pay me. You win, I pay you. What do you say? Uh, yeah, let's give okay. it a go. Good, very good. Yalla. You've got money to spare. We have to click right at the edge of the dartboard. Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. So it could be worse. That's it. I win. What do you mean you win? Yes, you did. Here. I'll be here any time you want to play again. Why is my aim off? There's something I'm not accounting for. All right, let's have a little look at the, the vent outside then. It's friendly 50 bucks. Yeah, I know. 50 bucks a game is not friendly. Move this in front of that, and then we'll have a tinker with it. I know moving stuff's difficult for you, Malachi, but come on. Push that box like you're in Broken Sword 3. I can't reach. Or we'll climb onto the light crate. is casting a shadow on this. Okay. The light switch is not working, is it? I've got to fix that this. That didn't work. Fix this somehow. Hmm. All right, we're gonna fix the uh, loose wires. Okay, let's have a look at this. This might be something to do with it. Oh. Okay. I'm just gonna match him up. Careful not to touch the metal bits, Malachi. Oh, no. Put it back, put it back. That should be right, I think. I 
was hoping we'd like twist them or something. There we go. Let there be light. I fixed the wires. Let's go. A brick, huh? Never know when you might need a brick. Climb on and see what we can do with this then. Let's play a non friendly dying game. I'll use this brick. Uh, brick it. Why not? There we go. Who needs salty, you know? Let's change the airflow. Too rusted, it won't move. Hmm, what about this one? It's too rusted. That motor oil. Now we have a reason to get that. There's a bit of oil still in it. I might be able to use that. Just put it in your coat, man. Are you even wearing a coat? It's a shirt, isn't it? Hold on. Where did you put it? Where did you put that motor oil, Malachi? <laughs> it merged with his chest. Did drink it. Look, look, look. That should help. Let's do on both of these. <clears throat> Fairly certain the one we want will be this one, because it'll throw off. Uh... It's starting to move. What about this one? Damn it! Okay, that one's broken. The dial broke. Let's put a bit more oil in this one then. That should help. Careful. There we go. There. I can feel the air coming out now. I don't feel like um, tricking these uh, dangerous looking guys into losing a game of dodge is a good idea, but uh, let's do it anyway. Hasim. Sa. Hey, sit down, Mr. Rector. How about a rematch on darts? Good, very good. Yalla. I haven't actually checked how my aim would be. Let's just try a, a straight shot. Oh, yeah. Mm, okay. Okay. Oh, totally off. Looks like I won. Goddamn mother. What is wrong with me tonight? I don't suppose there's something else I could do for you? Man, I hate to part with cold hard cash, you know what I mean? Is there something else? A man in a foreign country, there's all sorts of stuff you need. Information. Sure, sure. I know everything. Just ask. I don't think you know everything. All right, well, you know, he's at least happy to, uh, 
Chat with Asim. us. Sa. Hey, sit down, Mr. Rector. Tell me about Yusuf Masri. You want to know what I know about Masri? Two words. Be careful. He's a dangerous man. <clears throat> know what I mean? He puts you in the ground as soon as look at you. So don't piss him off. Not if you're smart. That's good to know. Is there anything else I should know about Yusuf Masri? If he goes for his top desk drawer, watch out. He keeps a gun in there. Oh. Hey, you know what? You need some muscle when you go see a man like that. Me and Sa, we could help you out. We'll do it for a thousand bucks. Better poor than dead. Know what I mean? Uh, thanks, but no thanks. That's very generous of you. But I think I'll pass. It's your neck. Hey, there's a crematorium a few blocks away in case I you need I trust these it. guys. Crematorium. That's funny. <laughs> All right, goodbye. I must be going. A pleasure talking with you. Yeah, sure. Hmm. Sounds like a fight. It's coming from the alley. What's going on here? Oh my god! It's the blonde guy from earlier. I like how like, oh my god, he's so hot. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I have a gun. I need to get closer. Not like I was ready to kill a man. <laughs> You? And to think, I could have spent the night on a quiet road in the desert. Perfect. That's just what I need. Ah, oh, damn it. I can't leave him here. Yeah? I can't believe I'm doing this. There were two beds in the hotel room, so... I think we can find out about him. Grown out crew cut. Prefer short hair in a hot climate. Recently left prison. Recently left the military. Kind of looks like he has, like, maybe dog tags on, so... I'd say military. Uh, evenly muscled physique. Plays a lot of different sports. He has, has a physically demanding job, but works out very precisely. I think he probably has a very physically demanding job. Calloused palms and fingers. Does heavy weightlifting, experienced gunman, plays a guitar. I think in this case, he's probably an experienced gunman. Yeah. David Walker was in the military for an extended time, but has recently left, most likely for a personal reason, and hasn't yet shaken off the habits of that lifestyle. I suppose I should try to learn something about this man while he's unconscious. I'm just looking at his muscles for uh, analysis. Yes, that's it. Let's take off his shirt. <laughs> his dog tags read Captain David Walker. If I'm not mistaken, black tags are used by special forces. Okay. Hmm. 
I wonder if he has a middle name. His dog tags read Captain David Walker. If I'm not mistaken, black tags are used by special forces. There's a card in his pocket. It's for a local hostel. Ah. David Walker, room 102. Okay. Well, we know where the hostel is. Oh, it's pill time. <clears throat> the hostel was over this way. What do you need to see to let me in? A hostel registration card or a credit card to get a room. Will this Here's my suffice? registration card. Go on through. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Lala. Of course the light switch wouldn't work. What was I thinking? I don't know where your room is. I can't it? see a thing. There must be a light in here somewhere. I can't see. Hmm. It's too high. There's a bulb up there. Do I have something that I can. Maybe I need like a stick or something. Oh, the wire hanger. Hold on. I do like how uh, you notice these items before and you think, huh, I'll probably need that at some point, but you can't take them immediately. Because, like, there's no reason to pick up, like, a wire hanger or some motor oil off the floor. But when you actually see a thing that requires that, you're like, oh, yeah. I remember that item that I couldn't pick up before. Maybe now I can get it because now I have the thing that needs it. And I thought my hotel room was bad. I have The Eye of Ra. Very atmospheric. Hmm. Interesting room. That's the backpack Walker had on when we met in the desert. I certainly know how to pack the bodies in here. This must be a slow time of year. It looks like David Walker is the only one staying in this room. Nice cloth animations. A grappling hook. I don't need to take that hook. Oh my goodness. A small grappling hook. I wonder what he uses it for. A knife. That's quite a knife. Little good it did him tonight, sitting in his backpack. I suppose it would be rude of me to take it. Besides, I'd probably hurt myself. It's not like you have a gun or anything. Walker's passport. David Livingston Walker. Livingston? He's from Indiana. Livingston is quite the middle name. He certainly looks the part of a hero, but you can never tell. Photo caption, two-time Medal of Honor recipient, Captain David Livingston Walker rescues a child. June 18th, 2009, AB reports of another firefight in Iraq had a silver lining day when photo service of a US combat unit defending a charity children's hospital during that attack. Though the hospital does not appear to have been the target of, a target of the insurgents, it was very much in the crossfire. Many lives would have been lost if not for these American soldiers who secured the hospital and got the children to safety. Hmm. No, that's a hint system. I don't need it. All right, well. I might as well. Let's teleport across. You're awake. Where am I? My hotel room. Did you at least buy me dinner first? 
If anyone owes anyone dinner, it would be you, since I saved your ass in that alleyway. Right. It's all coming back to me now. Why did you? No idea. I don't normally... Well, one good deed and all that. Are you quite unbroken? If you mean from the fight just now, yeah. If you mean as a human being... I didn't. Right. <laughs> who were those men, and why did they attack you? I don't know. I don't know who they were. I was just walking around the city. I mean, I'm obviously American. They could have been attempting to take me hostage. With a noose? You don't believe that? No, I don't. Steve Rogers over here. Where are you from? Indiana, USA. Been a long time since I've lived there, though. You? I live in New York. Uh, you don't sound entirely American. No. You backpacked into Cairo. What are you doing in Egypt? I'm just a tourist. I'd like to see as much of the world as I can before it's completely gone to shit. And you? Work. Ah. You weren't a military mechanic. I was trained to repair engines. But that wasn't my primary function, no. Army Ranger? Navy SEAL? U.S. Army Special Forces. Green Beret? They rarely travel alone. I am no longer in the military. I'm on my own. Hmm. So, <clears throat> Uncle Sam isn't feeding you. What do you do for money? I do odd jobs here and there. I rarely stop moving for long, though. Have you ever done security work? Bodyguard, that sort of thing? In the military, we secured a lot of things. Is this, is this, Malachi meets this man for like one moment and he's just like... I'm gonna hire him. So I'm gonna get his ass kicked, but goddamn those pecs. I'd like to hire you for a security <laughs> job, if you're interested. That depends on what I'd be securing. I need to see a man here in Cairo. He's unsavory. Chances are good I'm going to disappoint him. I could use backup. You saw those guys beat the shit out of me, and you want to hire me for security? That's my point. A good <laughs> fight. To a point. Yeah, well, that's the point that matters. What are you seeing the man for? What's your business? I appraise antiques. Oh, I had no idea the antiques business was dangerous. When there are millions of dollars involved, it's always dangerous. It's just this one job. I'll pay you 1,000 US. I'll do it, but you don't have to pay me. I owe you. No, you do not owe me. I'll pay. All right. Mr. Rector. I'll take the job, Mr. Rector, sir. I should warn you. Someone told me today that the man I'm going to see, Mr. Masri, keeps a gun in his desk drawer. Good to know. I'll keep my eye on him. We both should get some sleep before tomorrow. Meet me outside the hotel at 8 a.m. All right, Mr. Rector. I'll be there. Good night. Well, there we go. It's getting late. <clears throat> Better get to bed. I have that meeting with Masri first thing in the morning. Is it me or is there a little bit of tension between those two? I don't have time. Oh, is, is the night already gone? All right. Oh, it already has transitioned day, uh, night to day. Fair enough. Cause don't forget your pills. What about those a fall? That would actually be clarified. Good morning, Mr. Rector. Mr. Walker, I'm ready when you are. This is it. Ready? Lead on, Macduff. Macduff? Welcome. You must be Mr. Rector. I am Yusef Masri. Greetings, Mr. Masri. This is my associate, Mr. Walker. Sir? I assure you, it was not necessary to bring a bodyguard. Oh, you misunderstand. My He's my boyfriend. I see you have the <laughs> chest all set up for me. Whenever you are ready, Mr. Rector, I'm sure you will find the chest is exactly as I described it. Let's use our brains. Um. Oh, okay. That seems to be... I think it's that one. The jar stoppers. Yeah. Object detail. 
Mm, yeah. Rope and ring handles. That seems... Tutankhamen cartouche. Some kind of marble. Egyptian calcite. Is there another one that I missed? Oh, there is. Um, gold border. It seems to be Tutankhamun. Belongs in a museum. That's what the human just told me. Um, interesting. An intact canopic chest discovered at a recent date by Dr. Samuel Lessing. Due to the chest of Horam Herb, it was one of Tutankhamun's generals. Yeah, let me check out. It all seems to line up. The Canopic Chest is genuine. It was created during Egypt's 18th dynasty, approximately 1323 BC. You see? What did I tell you? However, it is not, as claimed, a chest similar to Tutankhamun's chest. It is, in fact, Tutankhamun's Canopic Chest, which was stolen mm. from the Cairo Museum in 1992. That's not true! The thieves tried to disguise the chest by adding the Horemhab cartouche to the side and staining the headdresses on the jar stoppers. For this defacing of a priceless and irreplaceable artifact, Mr. Masri and his accomplice Samuel Lessing should be taken out and summarily shot. I, you say that in front of him, Malachi. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that's a good idea. I'll notify the Cairo authorities. You are mistaken, Mr. Malachi Rector has, uh... He's got some stones on... Nice throwing knife. You do not want to fuck with Mr. Rector. Uh, good. Very good. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Get out! Gladly. Enjoy your prison term. Let's go, Mr. Walker. Well then. That was quite Holy the encounter. Shit, you tore that guy a new one. You do know how completely infuriating you are, right? I didn't hire you to critique my methods, as if you could. Hey, I'm complimenting you. That was awesomely badass. How do you know all that stuff? And oh god, the look on his face. I've never seen anyone turn green before, but he was, honest to god, the color of asparagus. Overcooked asparagus. Canned. <laughs> The chest was stolen from the Cairo Museum in 1992. The thieves tried to disguise it by staining the headdress. Now this game is a rom-com. Yeah. Shot. Jesus, his face just kept falling and falling. Uh-oh. Am I, am I, am I, am I is this gameplay? No, it's a cutscene, okay. Have you got Malachi? No, oh, nice one. Oh god. No, not that one. It's at this point I should point out that the writer of this game, Jane Jensen, uh, does Moonlight as a um, a gay romance author called Eli Easton. The same guys who that is completely true. Night. I'm sorry. I don't know what the hell they want with me. <laughs> So you know, the writer of this game does have a lot of a lot of experience in writing uh, gay romances. So, you, I mean, it's immediately obvious when you play Gabriel Knight Two as well. But hey, hey, look at that—the shoe print matches Venice. It checks out. It absolutely does. I need to stream the Gabriel Knight series at some point. You'll absolutely see it with uh, Gabriel Knight 2. Possibilities. Walker's attack is a self. He's a double agent. Walker also works for Dexter. Number three. We need to get out of here. I don't want to spend the next six months in lockup in Cairo. Right. I guess we should split here. It's been a pleasure, Mr. Rector. Good luck. Wait, give me your phone number. No. He's getting away. Wait.
kept a tree when you know who I am. I think I'm actually going to call that two and a half hour stream. Might not be my longest stream, but uh, I feel like that's a good place to end things. So... Make sure we got that. Yep. Mm hmm. And I'll be continuing this uh, next. Uh, so, well, this Sunday, sorry. I, 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 I've been really enjoying this, actually. I'm really enjoying the characters and the setting. It's been really interesting so far. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be continuing this on Sunday. At an earlier time of 2 p.m. I don't know how 2 p.m. is going to work out for me as a streamer, but uh, it doesn't seem like this has been the most popular stream anyway. That's fine. Um, let's see if there's any raids I can do for now. Um, no, I don't think there's any raids that are worth doing right now. Um, in that case, I will see you all on Sunday for the uh, next part of this playthrough. And... Uh, and then again next Tuesday for more Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So, got some cool stuff coming up. Uh, also, my Curse of Uncanny video is nearly done. If you're waiting for that, it's nearly done. I'm hoping it'll be up this weekend. Either on Patreon or on actually fully out on... See, I'm hoping to get it finished and rendered tomorrow. And if I can do that, then it will be up on in Sunday evening. After I finish my stream. So that'll be really exciting. But until then, uh, I will see you all later. Goodbye.